Well, it's been quite a week here in Canada, uh, and it all concludes, as it should, with some junk food. Uh, and you know you can't have your junk food until you've had your growing food. That's why we saved all these fun Canadian chocolates and candies for last. And the thing is, this is going to be maple free. We don't want to go with conventional stereotypes about Canada and everything containing maple. Like, you know, their coffee and their alcohol and their uh, bloodstream. No, this is the maple free edition. You will see some syrup on the table, but again, that's a complete formality. And we're going to get down to it in the conclusion of Canada Weeks. Ken Murph, eat the world. And I'm Murph. There's no Ken. We're about to do this. Ken Murph. Similar but different, that's what a lot of folks say about Canada and the U.S., because we got to be realistic. Canada isn't on Mars. It's right across the world's largest uh, unprotected border. So there are some things that are similar, but again, like Fruitopia, there's stuff that has endured in Canada that is no longer happening and hip in America. And as promised, there is candy to come. But I found that Nesquik was actually still a big thing here. And uh, not only was there Nesquik syrup, but it contained Rolo, which you can still find at many of your fine um, gas stations and grocery stores here, well, there in the U.S., but uh, I have yet to encounter Nesquik Rolo, so I went out and I got a bag of milk, and I put it in a, in a gallon, because those Canadians, they have all their milk in a bag, but let's test some uh, Nesquik Rolo. Da, 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 da. That ought to be enough. And pour in some milk. See what it's all about. See what the kids are doing with their nest quick Rolo. And uh, we'll keep it on the table to sort of wash down everything else as it comes. But let's see here what all the hubbub's about. Oh. It is a little bit more caramely than a regular uh, Nesquik or a Hershey's syrup or anything like that. So it's not like they're just slapping Rolo on there and then going about their business. Uh, hmm. I don't know if I drink it every day, but maybe once in a while as a treat. I wonder if you can heat this stuff up and make hot chocolate with it too. I'm sure you probably could, but uh, on the back there's a picture of a... Of a glass of milk and a spoon. So I guess that's the preferred way to drink your Rolo Nesquik. But, uh, and I'll put this on the milliliter side just to keep it real. There's also some Nesquik cereal with that little bunny on there. Uh, I don't remember what he says. He's kind of like annoyed to me. He's sort of just uh, gone the way of the dodo bird. I remember that there was a Nesquik rabbit, but I also remember that there was a Trix rabbit. So I don't know, this is kind of like a secondary rabbit for me, but let's see if this is just like a Canadian version of Cocoa Puffs. It has all these little uh, indicators on top that it's a good source of fiber and that it has whole grains. But I'm always like, any cereal, when they carry on about how much whole grains they got and then it's like sugar pops, I don't know, it just doesn't do much for me. But let's see here. I'm trying to get a proper service because Canadians don't like fat people. Three-fourths of a cup. That ought to do it. I'm not going to eat it all. All right. Oh, and it did make a claim of uh, making your milk chocolatey. Kinda. I don't know. That's like chocolate light, but we'll see after we get a couple of bites in how chocolatey it is. That's just cocoa pops. That's just uh, Sunny the Cuckoo Bird. It's the same thing, but with a different wrapper. And it looks like we make it here in America and then export it. But uh, it, it says to also try Reese's Puffs. 
which again are kind of the same thing, only they got a little bit of peanut butter in them. Uh, it'll get you by in a pinch, but I think I'd rather have some Canadian bacon and eggs. Moving right along, as promised, candy. Similarities and differences. In America, we have Smarties. They're the chocolate, or sorry, the chalkiest candy on earth. Uh, you usually only eat them at Halloween. There's no need for them the rest of the year. I've, I've referenced it a thousand times. It's it's on par with candy corn. Like I think they just dust off the same Smarties to plagiarize Louis Black, Millennia, if, uh, Ivanka, whatever the heck, Trump, plagiarism. Anyways, so. Yeah, like Louis Black said, you just dust them off once a year. But these Canadian Smarties appear to have chocolate in them. Either that or they got some kind of doo-doo cloud floating behind them. Because it's all around the, uh, the word Smarties. But there's these little tabs that say, make them last. And I, I guess you eat the red ones last. I don't know. That, that must be a Canadian thing. But they come in these little shoots. So then you go to this next one, and it's a similar little shoot. So let's see what it's all about. They like an M&M, but not so sweet. And as you can see, I'm taking some of these red ones. I've never longed for an American Smarty before, but I feel bamboozled. I think I want an American Smarty. Oh, these aren't bad. But they're just some kind of uh, some kind of chocolate. They almost remind me of those things if you make chocolate and you melt them down and reform them to look like your Aunt Susan on her birthday or like, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West. That's sort of the consistency of this chocolate, so it doesn't really knock my socks off. There's a new package and it is made by Nestle. Uh, so I, I don't know what the old package looks like. I got no frame of reference, but I guess go to smarties.ca if you want to check that out. But Nestle, Nestle, Nestle. I see your uh, racket, Nestle. You're just taking over Canada, one diabetic at a time. <sighs> Anyways, on to the next one. There's a brand called Maynard's, and they make these chewies up there. These are uh, Maynard Sour Cherry Blasters. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to trying one of those, but there's one that I'm a little on the fence about, and uh, I know a lot of people, some people love this and other people don't love it, but it's uh, Fuzzy Peach, Fuzzy Peach Beans, I don't know, but while you look at that, let me try one of Maynard's Sour Cherry Blasters. They're not very sour. They're chewy, but it's more like one of those fruit gems you get for a quarter out of the bulk candy, like the Suncoast one. Like, this is very, like, this isn't even a Sour Patch Kid, like, level of sour. This is like, I accidentally just smelt a citrus, citrus air freshener kind of sour. Like, there's something to the sourness, but it's not like, oh man, just like at Wendy's where they have that spicy chicken sandwich where it's just delicious, it's not spicy at all. And people are like, ooh, I don't like spicy. So if you don't like sour, go ahead and try Maynard Sour Cherry Blast. They aight, they aight, but like, you know, they're not the sourest thing I've ever had. Well, that was my second wife, Susan. Anyways, um, Maynard's Fuzzy Peach. They look a lot like a... Um, Oh, what the hell are those things? Oh, they look a lot like those stupid um, warhead jelly beans that we always keep encountering. But let's see how peachy they are. No, oh, man. They don't chew so well. They kind of break up like wax. But they do have sort of a naturally peachy flavor. I don't hate them, but unless you're a peach lover, I don't think I'd go looking for them on your Canadian vacation with uh, Chevy Chase and all these people. Oh no, that's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. They're alright, but like I saw these everywhere, these Maynard's Fuzzy Peaches. And they had Fuzzy Peaches like these too, like sort of the gem types. I don't know, they must be a big hit. But moving right along, 
another discontinued phase that used to be in the US, the Mars bar. And uh, if you see an M&M or if you see sales at your local stores, usually in the circulars, it'll say the M&M Mars, M&M hyphen slash liney thing Mars. But you don't see Mars much anymore. There used to be an almond Mars with, a, with some nuts and sort of like a uh, royal looking wrapper. You don't even see those much anymore either. But you're probably looking at this, especially if you were born after like, or like pre-1990, you're like, oh yeah, I remember the Mars bar. It's, uh, it's got its own little thing. It's got a nougat, kind of like a uh, Three Musketeer, but it's also got a vibe like a Snickers, believe it or not. So, uh, as you can see, when you break it, it does have that caramel and nougat. But, uh, the taste is distinctly Mars. It's not quite a dark, dark chocolate, but it, it doesn't have a milk chocolate taste with the chocolate. The nougat isn't as sweet as the Three Musketeers, so it is its own divine little creation, the Mars bar. Um, I always look to bring some home whenever I go into Canada, so when I'm at the border, the guy can say, are you bringing anything back? And I can be like, hell yeah, I am, and be all a tough guy about it, but then he's all, what? And I'm like, some Mars bars, and then he's like, get out of here! And then he just sends me on my way, sends me on my way. Uh, but I'll be sending a couple of these over to my friend Chris Davies, because that's uh, something her love Ralph used to eat. So, Chris, keep an eye out, and if you don't get these, call your daughter. Anyway, last and certainly not least, maybe least, I don't know, I haven't had it yet, is a Cadbury Dairy Milk Marvelous Creations Jelly Popping Candy Explosion de Bonbons. Wow, that is the longest name ever on a candy bar. And Cadbury's, due to the whole Canada UK thing, still has that original Cadbury's uh, recipe. I don't know if you heard, but U.S. Cadbury switched something up and everybody was upset, all the expats from the U.K. and Canada and everywhere else are like, you're messing with their heads bobbled like this, They're like Terrence and Philip, and they went, you're messing with our Cadbury's, and uh, everybody was upset. But this is right out of Canada, straight out of Canada. Get it on a t-shirt, like straight out of Compton. And if I, if I had to guess, I'd say this is a, a chocolate bar with Pop Rocks in it. But let's see. As you can see, it's all portioned. Like, it's five pieces. So you can break it off and share... Oh, excuse me, I'm getting all choked up about all this Canadian candy. You can break it off into pieces and share it with your friends, or you can just be like me and eat it by yourself on a bus stop on a rainy Wednesday, and that song's playing. Like, walking in the rain and the snow and the... No, but anyways, I'm getting, I'm getting off on a tangent. Let's see how pop rocking this chocolate bar is. Oh. Ugh. The chocolate's good, but the candy inside's almost in a bean or something like that. I guess that's the bonbon. Shake your bonbon. Let's see. Yeah, it fizzes in your mouth, and it kind of lives in your teeth. Oh boy, oh my. Well, it's not unpleasant, but it's not like anything I've ever had. And Cadbury with their dairy milk, usually you can go to a nice supermarket like Wegmans here in, in the Northeast, and they'll have the foreign candy sometimes. I see these dairy milks a lot, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, so uh, another little fun fact about going up to Canada, I would, I would approve all these candies, just depends on what your flavor is. Nothing was too bad, except for this Nesquik, that was an imposter, that's just uh, Cocoa Puffs. But, funny thing happened while we were at Lay Walmart, which I don't think we have here. Um, in Canada, they charged you for the plastic bags, but you could, like, if you were on the street in Toronto, you would have recycling bins, like the, and cigarette butt, like little ashtrays, all in these things that look like newspaper machines. So I guess they're very serious about the environment, and good for them, I'm very serious about the environment here. I even recycle my, my McDonald's bags, but they charged you for the plastic bags. 
So that was a bit jarring, and that was like a time where I was like, Murica. But um, I, hey, I guess that's one way around it, or people are gonna really have to think. Next thing you know, they'll have a deposit on them like pop outs. But uh, that was that's it for our Canada Week Spectacular. Lots of fun, and I will be back. I get up to Canada two or three times a year. I bring my friends that have never been. It's a lovely place. Oh, Canada, hey, all the rest. So watch all your favorite videos from this week in the Canada Week playlist, including our little teaser with all the little patriotic Canadian Uncle Side dolls. Um, if you've sent a request and it was like a two-man request, just give me time. Obviously, we're a man down right now, so we will get those fulfilled for you. We haven't forgot. We get all your requests just like this one from Gaming with Katie, a uh, good kid over in Horace Heads. And that's for you, Katie. There's some international candy for you. It's the very slightest definition of international because you have to like walk across the border. But we'll get some crazy Japanese candy in here and stuff like that sometime soon. Share and like on YouTube. Tell your friends that's the best thing you can do for us. Uh, all the playlists. Again, this will be under multiple ones. Canada Week, What's New, Reviews. So stumble across your favorite playlists and check things out. Go on Facebook, Ken Murph Do This. Twitter and Instagram, at Ken Murph Do This. Uh, send us an email, this at gmail.com. And coming up next will be something amazing, I promise you. We just got to caution it out, figure it out. But there will be another great video for you in the next week. And until next time, I'm saying, oh, Canada, to our friends. Uh, you have a wonderful home and native land. But I'm going back to mine. I'm sneaking across on a banana truck. I don't know why they're exporting bananas from Canada. Usually that's from Peru or Costa Rica. But I got a plan. And if you don't see a video in a week, just send some commissary to the Borders and Customs agents and they'll get it to me wherever they're holding me in some dark part of the world. But until uh, next time, for Ken, I am Murph, and we will see you next time we do this.